We are pretty fired to show you the brand new Trek Fuel EX for the 2020 model year. Somewhere in the dark and nasty regions where nobody goes. G'day folks, welcome to Flow Mountain Bike. Trek have given their insanely popular trail bike quite a large overhaul for the season and we're here to take a quick look at what those major changes are. First things first, you'll notice that the frame has an internal storage compartment in the down tube. Pretty crazy, more on that later on. We are seeing fork travel bumped up from 130 to 140 and gone is the full floater linkage system to create a lighter, stiffer frame. So they're the major changes. Now let's look at some of the finer details. We've got a brand new Bontrager dropper post lever. Very nice and beautiful lever throw under the thumb. Frame geometry that has been modernized. Longer reach, lower bottom bracket, slightly slacker head angle and a slightly steeper seat angle. All these numbers very much are bringing it up to speed with modern sort of standards. The fuel EX of 2019 was about three years old. The 2020 model has really stepped it up to modern day standards. We are seeing a brand new universal derailleur hanger. First time we've seen it on a bike. It's a, a new derailleur hanger that has been developed by SRAM that hopefully more frame manufacturers will adopt to create a universal derailleur hanger. That's something that we've probably dreamed about for many years. First time we've seen it on this bike. We've still got the Mino link adjustment so you can tweak the head angle and the bottom bracket height slightly to suit your riding preference. Seat tubes are significantly lower to allow for a lower standover height and longer dropper posts. The carbon models, the 9.7, 9.8, 9.9 are full carbon. There are no more aluminium rear ends on any of the 9 series fuels. The rear shock, reactive. The Trex proprietary reactive damper shock has a greater oil volume it is lighter and they've also hassled Fox enough to include uh, number integration on the rebound clicker. You'll see that that is just going to be a huge benefit for people setting up their rebound suspension for the first time. Instead of going 14 clicks from there, in and out, blah, blah, you can just set it to a number. It's going to be very easy to set up. All right, let's take a quick look at the trapdoor glove compartment the trap door. storage system in the down tube. Call it what you want. Trek are very open to admit that they are not the first people to try this internal storage compartment. Yeah, we've seen it with Specialized with their SWAT storage water air tool system, which has become incredibly popular. It is so handy. A lot of people really freaked out when it first came. Uh, but look, it is so handy being able to stuff all your bits and bobs inside the frame, underneath the bottle cage, and just leave it in there for the time that you need it. All in all, the new Trek Fuel EX has taken one slight step up towards the kind of slash and remedy realm in their range because now they have the hard tail, the pro caliber, and there is a new bike due to come out that we've seen your Landon F racing in the World Cup circuit covered in a sort of a shroud concealing what this bike actually is. I'm sure it's yet to be released, we may or may not know. The new top fuel has bumped up from 100 mil to 120 mil travel, so that's gone up the range slightly. So the Fuel EX, slightly longer travel on the fork, a bit more aggressive in the frame geometry. The Remedy and the Slash and the Session remain the same. On the trail, you really get a feeling for the bike's sort of sturdiness and a robust feel, but it is still incredibly sensitive and supple in the suspension. The climbing performance, I find, has been a real big benefit. Out of the saddle and in the saddle, the bike climbs seem to be a little bit more sprightly than the old one, despite the fact it is longer, bigger, slacker, and more fork travel. It seems to climb a little bit easier, probably due to the fact that the seat angle puts you forward over the front of the bottom bracket a bit more. It's just a really good zippy climbing bike. That's it for us from now. We're gonna get this bike on Australian soil ASAP, so please stay tuned for more from our bike that we have had a lot of experience in and we really, really enjoy riding. It is nails that sweet spot between trail, cross country and enduro, fits perfectly in the middle for hard riding, but it's just never too much bike to handle. Thank you for watching. Jump over to flowmountainbike.com for more of our ride reports, some images and more details on the new bike and stay tuned for more. Cause there's something down there.